Hi, I'm Sami Yaakov. This presentation is entitled The Effect of Inductors Interconnection on PWM Converters Losses. And it's also an answer to a riddle that I've posted earlier. So here is the riddle. There are two inductors here, L1 and L2, and they have an initial current of I1 and I2. In this case, this current is sort of in the same direction. And now we are connecting these two inductors by these switches. They are working together such that the inductors are in parallel, or you might say in series. Then we have another case, which is similar, except that the currents are in opposite direction. In fact, they are sort of following the same direction, I1 and I2, and again, we are connecting these two together. And the question was, what will be the current of each inductor after connection, and how much energy is lost? And I've also suggested to try to develop a back-of-the-envelope proof rather than to go through an elaborate derivation. So why is this important and how does this relate to PWM converters? Here I'm showing half a bridge, two transistors. This could be an inverter, for example. We have the two transistors and I'm showing all the parasitic inductances. Here it's the parasitic inductance within the package itself. This is the interconnection. And also here we have the internal inductances. Actually, uh, I've missed one here. And the situation I'm talking about is that, that this transistor is in the off state. And then I'm turning off this transistor, which was conducting. While it was conducting, here is the current. I'm assuming this is the direction of the current. So the current will be passing through the transistor. Once I turn it off, then the current, of course, will switch path and will go from here and the voltage, in fact, will self-commutate to a higher voltage and the current will pass here through the dial. Now, here we have now these parasitic inductances and here is an inductor. So this is a situation in which we have an inductor which is sort of connected to these inductances. So this is exactly the same situation. So here, we also expect losses, and this is in fact part of the switching losses. Now the quick and intuitive answer to the loss of energy can be derived in a very simple way like this. We start with two inductors connected, different current. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to represent each one of the inductor as an inductor without any current plus a current source. This representation is for a, an inductor with a current in it. Same thing, it's an equivalent circuit. So here is one, and here is another one, and this is the case in which the currents are sort of following one the other, okay? Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to subtract from this the case of the same current. Since I2 is lower than I1, then I will assume now that I have sort of a superposition of one case in which, so I have I2 passing through these two inductors. What is left is the difference, I1 minus I2, and two inductors. So I have here an equivalent inductance, L1 in parallel to L2, which has some initial current, I1 minus I2, and this energy is going to be lost because there's no connection here. Nothing is absorbing the energy. You can envision it as if you have here like a imaginary resistance and then the energy of this thing will be passing through this resistance. Now, if there is no resistance, what will happen is the voltage will go very high, increase until you have actually a spark and all the energy will be collapsing. So all this energy is lost. How much energy is there? Well, very simple. This is the current square times the inductance over two. So this is the answer to how much energy is lost in this connection. Again, we have two unequal currents. I'm using superposition to remove the same current which is passing through these inductors, which in this case is I2. I am left with I1 minus I2 
with this equivalent inductance, and all this energy is lost, and that's the energy. So this is the answer, very simple. So what about the current that the inductors will carry after connection? Here I can invoke the conservation of magnetic flux law. This is not a very well law, but it's very powerful. Now, I can find the flux from this definition of inductance. Inductance is flux over current, so therefore the flux is L times I. The initial flux here is L1 I1 plus L2 I2, and this is equal to the final flux, which is IF. This is the final value. This is the current of the two inductors after connection times L1, and then, of course, IF times L2, from which I can find the final value of the current. Now, the energy lost calculated from here will be the energy at the beginning and the energy at the end. Well, it's more lengthy um, as compared to what we have here, which is kind of immediate. So from here, I can get the energy loss, and from here, I can get the final value of the current. To demonstrate the situation that I've just uh, described, I'm running here now an LTSPI simulation. Here I have two inductors, L1 and L2. L1 is 1 millihenry, L2 is 10 millihenry, and they have an initial current of 10 amp, this is for L1, and 5 amp for L2, okay? I've put here a resistor, the purpose of which is to absorb the energy, the excess energy due to the fact that the currents are unequal and obviously some of the energy will be lost, okay, as we have seen before. I'm also calculating here, first of all, the total energy during the run, that is from beginning to the end, at each point I'm calculating the energy, and this is I squared over the first L1, and then I squared the second inductor at each simulation point. And I'm also calculating here on the run, the flux, I1 times L1, I2 times L2, okay? Now the values are as follows. We have one millihenry first inductor, 10 amps, 10 millihenry and five amps. So the total flux is 60, actually it should be milliamp Henry, okay? So this is the total flux that we have in the system. According to what I've shown with the superposition and this intuitive explanation, the energy loss should be I1 minus I2 square and the two inductors in parallel divided by two. This is the energy and it comes up to be 11.36 millijoules. Okay, this is 25. The difference is 5, so 25. And then the inductance is in parallel with 10 over 11, and then divided by 2, okay? So this is what I would expect. So let's have a look now as we run. What I'm showing here is the currents of L1 and L2. So this is one current, and this is the other current. This is starting at 10, and this is starting at uh, 5. What we can see that at the beginning, the currents are different. Eventually, they are becoming to be the same. This is clearly the case as the system stabilizes. We see that the total flux is constant from the beginning to the end, according to the conservation of flux law. It's about 60.045. Well, this is a numerical error. We have calculated it to be 60 milliamp. Henry, okay? And then what about the total energy? Now we start with this energy here, and as this process goes on, we are losing the energy, and eventually we come up to this level, okay? Now the difference between the beginning and this level is the energy lost. And using the cursor here, I find that at the beginning we're starting with 175, and the energy lost is 11.3. Okay, and as you would recall, this is exactly what I have found from this simple expression.
So as we see that everything is okay. And what we see here is really explains what is going on in a very simple way. Now, what about the case that the current will be in opposite direction? Everything is the same, but you have to be careful to keep the sign, both for the total flux and also for the energy lost. Okay, so in this case, it will be 10 plus 5. And in this case, it will be here minus. So once you do that, we get 40 milliamp Henry for the total flux, and we get 102 millijoule for the energy lost. It's larger because the current now is the same direction. So here it is. Again, this is the current, okay? Now it's minus five here, it's a negative value. Again, the total flux, according to the conservation of magnetic flux is constant, and it is 40. And this is exactly what we found here, minus 40. And the energy loss here, using again the two cursors, is found to be here 101.86, and we've calculated to be 102, which is again pretty much the same considering the numerical error that might occur here. So again, we see that it really doesn't matter what is direction, as long as you keep the sign, you get the correct answer. Now, what is the implication to a PWM converter, okay? Now, these inductances are much smaller than this one. So if you calculate the energy loss, then these two in parallel are actually the stray inductances. So the energy lost in this case for the connection here will be I squared, the current of the inductor, times LS over two. This is when connecting. But this energy eventually is going to be lost because when this transistor is turned on again, we have current the other direction and it's going to be lost. So therefore the total loss is I squared over LS. And the power loss is of course times the frequency. Now the higher the frequency, the higher or the larger are the losses. And this shows again that parasitic inductances are very bad and you should try to avoid them as much as you can in PWM converters. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you find it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.